Okay guys, so let's keep going with the texturing and we're going to get started on these two plants that we have over here. So I'm going to jump out of the camera and I want to go find those plants. And this is the first one here, which is going to be plant one. And I've provided the textures in the texture folder for these two plants as well. So what we have here is some different objects that I renamed. So we have the dirt which is down here uh, at the base of the plant. We also have the vase, we have the stems, the root, and the leaves. So we need to go create a new V-Ray material for this. So I'm going to create one. And we'll call this one Dirt. And in the diffuse layer, we want to load up the Dirt image. So we can click on the dirt image here, open that up, and there is our dirt. Now since the camera isn't really going to be that close to these two plants, then there's really no reason to have to work on all the details of the dirt. So we could just leave it as is. So we could take this dirt material and drag it over here to the dirt object. And it looks like we need to change the projection, so I'm just going to change this to cubic and it looks a little too big so I'm going to go into the texture axis tool mode grab the scale tool be sure that you are clicking the object that you're going to be scaling plus its material and we're going to scale that down and that looks much better okay so the next thing on the list is going to be the vase here so I'm going to select this dirt object control click and drag over to duplicate it and we'll call this one base and I'm going to load up another image and this one here is going to be this uh, 35 pattern here so we're going to open that up and since this is going to be some type of ceramic vase then it needs to have a little reflection and a little specular to it so I'm just going to enable the specular layer 1 and that actually looks pretty good the way it is so we'll take this and we'll drop it over here to our vase object and it looks like that needs to be slightly adjusted. So the projection, we're just going to change this to cylindrical. And we're going to go over here to our texture axis tool mode again. Grab the scale tool, scale it down. And we need to rotate it because I want this little flower design here to be seen. So I'm going to rotate this slightly and then I want to be able to also pull this up so I'm just going to grab the Y handle here for this texture axis I'm going to pull that up. Now you can see it gets cut off right there so we want to be sure that that's going to be down on the bottom of the vase alright so that looks pretty good so we have our vase texture now the next thing is going to be the stems so I'm going to take the dirt material and duplicate that one and we'll call this stem and in the diffuse layer again we're going to load up a new image and I want to load up this wood 03 material here and we'll click and drag this over to the first stem so we want to select the stem plus its material and we want to zoom in here you can see that the material is rather stretched at the moment so we need to change its projection to let's try a cubic and of course we're going to need to go back to the texture axis tool and scale that down considerably and that looks a whole lot better so now all we have to do is take this new material that we applied to the stem and just duplicate it to all of these uh, stem objects here and of course we can also reuse it for the second plant as well so here we have the root object and if anything we could probably just take this and apply it to that and that will work just fine so now we need to make one for the leaves so I'm going to take the stem material duplicate that one 
and in the diffuse layer I'm going to load up a new image and it's going to be this arc 24 leaf 01 material so I'll open that up and I'll rename this to leaves could drag this over here to the leaf object leaf number one so we need to click on that one and we need to go find where it's at it's up here at the top and we're going to need to change the projection on this material to cubic looks a little big so we need to go back to the texture axis tool grab the scale tool you can see just how big this texture is we need to shrink it down to fit the object a little better so we're just going to scale that inward and now that looks a lot better so now we can just take this leaf material and we can just control click and drag to duplicate it to the other leaf objects now we have this wrap object which is some type of wrap that's been wrapped around the base of this plant so we could just leave it a gray color and that way it will be some type of grayish colored wrap we also have this object here which is just another little uh, stem or actually it's probably some type of stick or something uh, when you purchase a plant it usually has a stick coming out of the base with the name attached to it or something like that to tell you what kind of plant it is in this case we're just going to leave it as is okay so we'll open up plant number two and what we can do is just control click and drag the leaf material from the plant one up here to the leaves on plant number two we'll just duplicate that for all the leaf objects we'll take the stem material here and we'll control click and drag that up to all of the stem objects and here we have a couple more up at the top and we have a leaf there so we need to control click and drag that green one to there okay and we also have some dirt which we need to copy from the first one and we have a vase now the vase is a little different than the first one so we need to take this vase material here and control click and drag to duplicate it and we're gonna call this blue vase and in the diffuse layer we're going to load up the blue material that I have here open that up and now we can take this drag this over here to the vase and we can just change the projection to cubic that should be just fine that looks fine and there we have our two plants okay so we want to quickly move over to the TV so what I've done here is for the TV object which is in the furniture null so we need to expand that go into the TV and here we have the screen object and then this object number one here this is the little black border that goes around the screen so we need to create some type of glossy material that's going to be used for our TV so I figured what we could do is we could make two materials one would be a black plastic uh, for the outside and then we could use a black material that's reflective for this frame and then we could also make a third material for the screen so I'm just going to take this leaf material and I'm going to duplicate that over and I'm going to call this TV gloss and I'm going to clear this material out of the diffuse color here and I'm going to select uh, let's see let's change the color up here to something like almost a black not quite a black but almost so maybe an RGB value of maybe 13 So click OK and we need to activate the specular alright so let's go down here and since this is going to be gloss we want to make sure that it is glossy of course by default the reflection glossiness is set to 1 and I think the specular layer transparency with the default setting of 90 should be just fine for what we want to do so we want to take this new TV gloss and apply it to the frame which I'm just going to call this screen frame so now we can click on this TV gloss material and control click and drag over to duplicate it and I'm going to call this one screen 
and I want to load in an image that's going to be on the TV screen. And of course, because TV screens uh, have a luminant value to them, then we need to activate the luminosity layer. And in the texture map here, I'm going to load up an image, and I'm going to select the image here called Zombie Cap. Now, for those of you wondering, this is a screen cap from the new J.J. Abrams film, which is Super 8. I went and saw it a few days ago and thought it was pretty good, so I just grabbed a screen cap that I found online to use for this TV screen. So we'll open that up, and now we have a reflective material for our screen. So we can take this now and drag this over here to the screen, and we need to set its projection to cubic. Click on the screen and then we need to go to the texture axis tool but you notice when we pull this up and down we cannot see the material anywhere on the screen and this seems to be another limitation with V-Ray and its integration with Cinema 4D uh, when you use illuminating material in the luminosity layer you can't see it in the viewport here when you try to move the material around to set its orientation correctly so the workaround for this is to copy the texture map from the luminosity layer and paste it into the diffuse layer. So what we could do is click on the luminosity layer and where it says texture map here we can right click and choose copy, go down to the diffuse layer and then paste it in here to the diffuse layer. Now when we go back now we can see the map being applied to our object. So now you can see it's a little too small. We're getting some repeating edges here, so we just need to scale this up until those two edges go to the outside of that frame. And we're getting a little bit of a repeating edge over here, so we just need to play around with the Move tool and the Scale tool to scale these up properly. And I think that there looks pretty good. Okay, so the next thing now is to create the black material for the TV and the stand. And that's really simple. We just take the TV gloss, duplicate it, and in the specular layer, we'll just come down here and disable trace reflection. And what we can do is take the amount here, and I want to get a little more specular out of that. So I'm just going to take the specular layer transparency down to maybe a value of about 80 percent and that gives us a little more specular there on this material. So now we can just call this TV body and we can drag this new material over here to the stand and also to object 4 and 3. Okay so now since we've got these little details textured. can close this stuff up now. Okay, so now we can move over to these lights that we have here. We also have some lights hanging up here at the top, although this track light up here has not been seen yet by the camera. So if you want to move that around, you're welcome to do that. But I'm mainly concerned about these three lights right here that are hanging behind the bed. So I'm going to click on one, and that's going to be here in the first light. So we have all of these objects making up this one light assembly. So I want to find the object that's being used for the inside part, which is going to be the reflective material. Okay, so there is the reflective inside part. So I want to make a new material. So I'm just going to create a new V-Ray Advanced Material, and we're going to call this Chrome. I'm going to activate the reflection layer and perhaps maybe we'll activate the specular layer and by doing so we can come down here and deactivate trace reflection and then we can drag this over here to this first object which is going to be the chrome and then we can take our metal material that we use for the lamps and take it over to the main null for the light Okay, so now we can do the same for these other lights. I'm just going to take this material and control click and drag to duplicate it to the other ones. And then I'm going to open up these two lights and I'm going to drag in the chrome material for object four. And I'm just going to control click and drag this one up to that one there. Close them up 
and now we've got our lights taken care of so the next thing that we need to do is work on the rug and like I said earlier I saved the rug for last because it's going to create geometry that's going to slow down the viewport so what we want to do first of all is find the rug object so we just click on it see it's in furniture and here we have the rug so the idea with the rug that I did in the original render was that I applied a material to it and instead of using a bump to generate kind of like a carpet type of look I wanted to add some thick threads almost like some type of Persian rug or something along that line but I wanted the threads to take the color of the material that was applied to the rug object in this case it was just a plane that I subdivided so we want to create a material for the rug now you don't have to create the same design that I'm going to do but I thought it would be neat just to kind of keep the same design pattern flowing throughout the scene so we have this blue color and we're using the blue here for the pillowcases, the sheet, and the wall. And we also have a blue color with this wavy pattern out here on these chairs. So I figured what we could do is we could take the same material and apply it to the rug object. However, you can see that the projection, of course, again, by default, is set to spherical. So we need to change this to flat. And we need to change the orientation. So uh, make sure that you do have the texture tag selected and the object. Go to the texture axis tool, grab the rotate tool, and let's rotate this around. Okay, so that was the wrong direction, so let's flip it this way. There we go, that looks pretty good. And now what we can do is just scale this up because I want the pattern to be a little bigger in scale. So grab the scale tool and I'm going to scale this up to maybe about there that looks pretty good and if you want you can actually take the rotate tool and just rotate that around to move the pattern uh, 90 degrees which I think that there looks pretty good as well okay so we got our material set up for the rug so now what we need to do is with the rug selected go up to hair and click on add hair all right, so it's added the hair object, and of course, these hair strands are way too large at the moment. So we need to go into the Guides tab for the hair object. And for the length, we want to take these to maybe a value of 8. All right, so 8 looks pretty good because I want the carpet to be kind of thick. Uh, if you want your carpet to be thicker, then you can obviously take this value up, or if you don't want it to be so thick, then you can take the value down. But I think a value of 8 will be pretty good. So we need to go over to hair. And the current count is 5,000. Now I want to up this considerably, so I want to take this value up to 30,000. And we'll go over to the feel hairs, and we need to activate this option and the count of 40,000 that will be just fine so we'll leave that where it's at so we also want to come over here to the generate and by default the type is set to none now unfortunately right now V-Ray cannot render the none type we have to generate geometry in order for V-Ray to see it now if you're using the standard Cinema 4D render engine to render your hair then you can leave this type set to none and then you'll get a really nice hair look. You'll get the same type of look that you find here in the hair preview material. But since this is a limitation of V-Ray uh, perhaps maybe in a future release maybe the guys that are working on this will incorporate that function but for now we have to generate geometry in order for V-Ray to see the hair so we'll go back to the hair and in the generate tab we need to change the type to something like maybe flat and as soon as we do that this is where the viewport is going to start to slow down so if we try to move you can see that it's not really all that bad depending on your machine uh, you're probably going to slow down quite a bit okay so we need to go back to the hair object and I want to take the hair object and I want to place it as a child of the rug 
and I want to go over to the hair tab and I want to change the count here to 50,000 because we're going to need a lot more. Okay, so there's that. So now we need to go over to the hair material and we need to activate the frizz option as well as the kink option. And that will give us a nice carpet look versus the hair look, which is by default. Click off of that. And now you can see we're starting to get a really nice frizzy look here. It looks pretty good. We may need to add some more fill hairs, but I think we're doing pretty good. So if we click on the material and open that up, and we go into the color, we have an option here for surface. So we need to open that up and we need to activate surface. And what this is going to do is it's going to take the material that we have here on the rug object and it's going to pull the color out of that rug object and place it on the hairs. And you can see here in the viewport what it's doing. Uh, the blue color is pulling the blue out and placing it in the hairs. That way we have a nice threaded rug pattern that matches the same pattern on the rug object. So I'm going to attempt to back out the camera here. And better yet, let's just jump into the main camera. And now I'm going to render this and we're going to see how long this takes now. Alright, so before we conclude this, there is two more things I quickly want to do. And the first thing is, of course, if you haven't already noticed, is that if someone was actually going to be in this type of room, and let's just say that it's during the daytime and you want to lay on the bed and watch TV, you'll notice here that the sun is actually striking the TV, which is going to cause a lot of unwanted glare and highlighting. And to be honest, I really didn't even think about that when I designed the layout for this room. So one thing that we could do is to just go up and I'm going to jump out of the camera and I'm also going to turn off the V-Ray hair object. We can actually go up here and probably just fill in some of these glass areas here. So if you want to design some type of curtain or blind system, uh, some type of shade or something like that, you can do that if you want. Uh, however, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a cube. I'm going to call this shade. And I'm going to position this up here. Pull it over. And it needs to be rotated. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hide these three here on the right. I'm going to hide those three uh, shaded areas there and I'm going to leave this one over here in the corner open. So these three large glass panes here will actually be covered from the inside. So I'm going to shrink down this cube and pull it in. Go to a top view. And this is going to be like some type of shade or something that you might pull across during the daytime if you did not want all the light to come in or maybe something at nighttime. Okay, so something like that I think will work just fine for what we're wanting to do. All right, so let's go back into the main camera and I'm going to apply a white material to that shade object and we'll just quickly render this again and I just want to see what the lighting is going to look like now with those three window panes covered up. Okay, so now we have the new darkened look here because we blocked three of those large uh, glass panes on the ceiling and that got rid of the light striking the TV area over here so that's totally up to you if you want to make something like that. In the original render I did not have a shade in there I just left those glass panes open for the light to come in. So the last thing to do is add an image on the outside of the beach. So what we could do is jump out of the camera and let's create a plane and we're going to call this background And we need to change the orientation to minus Z. We'll pull this back here. 
and we want to take the width and height segments down to one. There's really no need to have 20 of them. Go back to the camera. Okay, so what we want to do here is set up an image that's going to go on this plane. So we need to uh, create a new V-Ray material. And I'm just going to call this one BG for background. And in the diffuse layer one, we want to load in the image, which is the Caribbean beach here. And we need to take notice of the resolution, which is 1280 by 1024. It also tells it here. So now what we need to do is go over to the background object. And for the width, we need to make this one 1280, the height 1024. Now we can take our background material, drag it over to the background. And one thing that I noticed is that since we applied the glass material to our doors here, we really can't see through them. Well, we can see through them. We just can't see textures applied to anything on the other side. So we need to find those doors and disable them from being seen in the viewport. So here is our plane, and we just need to position this somewhere about there maybe. And instead of actually using the width and the height segments here to scale it up, we want to make sure that this image is scaled evenly to maintain its current aspect ratio, which is 1280 by 1024, which is the resolution. So we just need to grab the scale tool and we need to scale this up and it will scale it evenly while maintaining that resolution, or in this case, the ratio. So we need to pull this up. And you'll notice here that we have part of the beach that's being cut off because in the original image, if we right click on the preview and choose plane, you can see on the preview we've got a good shot here on the bottom of the sand on the beach. However, in this image here we cannot see the beach. So we need to change the projection to UVW mapping. And now we have a really good shot here of the beach in the sand but it's kind of being cut off down here on the bottom so what we need to do is just kind of drag that down a little bit it's going to need to go a little bit more alright so that looks pretty good Could probably pull that over slightly okay so now we have our background set up so let's quickly render this again. Okay, so there is the image rendered with the beach background applied, which actually looks pretty good, although it kind of looks like this house is sitting a little too close to the water, but uh, it does look pretty good regardless of that. So the only thing I see that's left to do would be applying, of course, turning the rug back on, but I also wanted to quickly put up some picture frames on the wall. So I'm gonna create a new scene and I'm going to create a cube and I'm going to create a frame out of this cube so I'm just going to shrink this down in the Z value and I think something like that would look okay so we want to give it a little rounding before we make it editable so I'm going to enable the fillet option we'll give it a subdivision of 3 and we'll take this here down to something like 0.5 for the radius make it editable click on the front face choose the extrude enter and I'm gonna pull that in to maybe about something like that and then we'll just extrude that in slightly just a little bit okay so this here is going to be called our picture frame and then if you wanted to, you could add some loop cuts in here and maybe add some type of bezeline or something around the frame. But I think for something like this, this will be just fine. Just something very simple. So we'll click on it and we'll click copy. We'll go back to our main scene. And of course, another way to get to that is to go to window and then you have your scene files listed here. And now we can just hit edit paste that will paste the frame in there and we need to rotate it around so it's going to rotate that 90 degrees 
and we'll just position it up here on the wall and maybe what we'll do is we'll put one there and that actually looks a little too big so I'm just going to shrink that down just a little bit and I want to go and make a set selection for that inner polygon there and we'll just call that one picture and I want to take the metal color and apply that as the base so it needs to go to the left and then for the picture uh, this is something that you can just choose on your own or you know whatever that you want to apply and put in there so I'm just going to so I'm going to create a new V-Ray material and I'm going to call this one picture for frame I'm going to activate the specular layer 1 and for the diffuse layer I'm just going to load up my own image okay so I've loaded up my little intro image that I use and now we can take this and we can just apply it to the set selection so we need to grab that set selection tag drag it down here to the selection and we need to change the projection to cubic and of course it's going to need to be scaled correctly so we need to go to the texture axis tool and we need to scale that down and scale it up a bit and then perhaps pull that down some okay so now what we could do is take the picture frame and duplicate it and then pull it over to this side of the bed alright so now all we need to do is turn the hair back on alright so we have everything turned on the sliding glass door is just disabled by the viewport so that's not really a big deal so we'll just quickly go over into the render settings and we'll set this up for a high quality render so we'll go over into the render settings click on the V-Ray bridge and for the anti-aliasing we can leave at a subdivision of 1 by 4 there's really no reason that I see unless it's a rare case to take the minimum subdivision beyond 1 the maximum subdivision you could probably take this up a little higher but usually 4 works just fine the type I usually like to use adaptive DMC it's a good blend between speed and quality so here down at the bottom we have use DMC sampler threshold so if you click on the DMC sampler we have the threshold here which is set to 0 0.01 so usually what most people like to do is for the final image they usually like to take this down to something like 0 0.005 so now we'll go over to the GI tab and we want to select something that is a higher quality so what we originally chose was the number three which was the irradiance map and light cache medium so now we can just go up to perhaps the number four which is high we also have number five which is high which is this one right here which is high detail GI preset so you can click on that one if you want to however I'm going to choose number four Okay, so I'm going to go over to the output and I have my image set to 1280 by 720. So I'm going to render this out to the picture viewer. And of course my picture viewer is going to come in large so I'm just going to scale it down so we can all see it. And of course it's going to have to prepare so well, I'm just going to let this quickly sit here and uh, render out and then we'll come back and take a look at it once it's finished okay so the render has finished and there's a couple of problems that I see with it first of all we've got a little too much reflection here going on on these two picture frames now of course that can be easily fixed by just reducing that value for those materials and of course we have the same thing going on over here with the TV screen as well picking up a little too much reflection although with most TV screens uh, they do catch some but I think that this is a little too much in this case also the other thing that I see is that the picture is not bright enough for that illuminating material 
So we could quickly go in there and adjust that and change it as well. So I'm just going to zoom in here to 100% and just take a look around just to see if there's anything else that we may want to change. And everything else looks pretty good. We've got nice reflections here showing up in the glass. You can see we're picking up some reflection. The outside looks good. The burn value that we chose is working pretty well to keep the outside uh, places from getting hot spots. Looks good. The floor looks good. We could probably take the bump map and go down with it a little bit more just to see some more of the grooves and whatnot in the wood. But I think it looks okay for now. We're getting some nice shadowing. I don't see any artifacting anywhere. So let's just quickly talk about this material here for the TV screen. So I'm just going to close this out. And for the TV screen, what we can do here is go over and click on that one. And in the luminosity layer, for the amount here, what we need to do is take this up. So maybe we'll take it up to a value of maybe four. And by doing that, you can see that now we have really brightened up that image. So what I'm going to do is take and close this out first of all. I'm going to take the main camera and I'm going to bring it over here towards the TV screen. I'm going to turn off the rug. I want to be able to move around a little faster. Okay, so I'm just going to render a very small region here because I want to see what this looks like with taking this luminosity value up to 4. And I can already see that it is a lot brighter. And the only other thing that I see that we need to do, of course, is take down the reflection. Okay, so that doesn't look too bad. So we'll go click on the screen again. We'll go over to the specular layer. And for the amount, we'll just take this up to a value of maybe something like 97 maybe. Because we want to pick up some reflection, but we just don't want to pick up a lot of it like we were. So for the screen value, I'm going to go back one more time. And for the luminosity layer, for the amount here, I'm going to change this to a value of maybe 6. And then we'll render region this area one more time. Because I'm about to wrap it up here with this. So we'll just let this finish to see what this looks like. And I think that this should provide the results that we want. Okay, so that looks pretty good. You can see that we are picking up just a little bit of reflection in there. It's not really a lot, but it looks pretty good. And the image has turned out to be a little brighter. All right, so that wraps up this series on V-Ray and the basics of interior rendering. Hopefully this has given you a better idea of how to use V-Ray when you're wanting to render an interior shot. So here's one more look at what we've created here using V-Ray for Cinema 4D. So perhaps in the future what I'll do is maybe make something again with V-Ray, but instead of doing interior, we'll move to something like perhaps exterior shots, uh, maybe something like uh, lighting the outside of a house or a building or something like that. So thank you guys for watching this series on V-Ray, and I'll catch you guys later.